This was a good decision. <laughs> oh, helmet hair, hello. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if you can hear the sounds around me. But this is the sound of nature. <laughs> this is what I came to this island looking for. From a lifetime of love and now a growing fear for our natural world, my challenge is to climb some of the world's biggest and most beautiful trees, all in the name of promoting reforestation. We have all played a part in this destruction, and now we all need to play a part in its regeneration. We only have one world and the future of it and all its inhabitants is in our hands. So come climb with me as I seek out spectacular specimens and spruce social change. I am Kit. And welcome to Kit Climbs. Hey crew, ah, oh, so good to have you back. Please stick with me as I continue my journey through one of the most breathtaking destinations on the planet. Welcome to Palawan. Palawan, oh, it really has the potential to be a haven for beach bums and nature buffs like us. But before I get your hopes up, there really is an urgent matter that we need to tackle. Palawan is under attack. Yeah, deforestation practices are threatening the very existence of this paradise. And we're not just talking about losing forests, we're talking about losing wildlife, the indigenous communities, and quite possibly the very balance of nature itself. It is just absolutely gorgeous. It's giving me goosebumps, not just because it's cold, but because I am just so fortunate and thankful to be experiencing this. Because like I say, I fear that the future for something like this area, uh, wh what will remain of this beautiful landscape only five minutes down the road just before, just a couple of minutes ago, we were in an area that was being actively cleared of this beautiful landscape. Look, right here. It's happening. It's happening right there. It's, it's not protected, that is for sure. And, and if it is, no one is doing anything about making sure that it is in full. Palawan is home to some of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. There are lush forests and vibrant coral reefs. However, all of these are being threatened by deforestation. Yeah. It has been driven by logging to cut down for charcoal, to make furniture, to make houses. Mining and palm oil plantations are spreading all the way through the south and into UNESCO World Heritage listed areas. <laughs> the impact of the deforestation, it goes so far beyond the loss of the natural beauty as well. It is polluting the rivers. It threatens the health of local communities and it disrupts the way of life for the indigenous people who depend on the forest for survival. This has led to poverty and social unrest it is creating has created a very dangerous situation for everyone. Poverty is overwhelming. And I'm not just talking about part of the population, huge amounts of the population are, are really stuck in this desperate cycle of poverty, living in what you could almost describe as squalor. The thing is, is that these people in these situations cannot be blamed because, well, firstly, there's the lack of education, but just the lack of access to resources to improve their quality of lifestyle. Let's look at Madagascar, for example. The forests there were absolutely decimated because of the poverty of the people, because what they had to end up doing is clearing the land, like exactly what we're going past right here, clearing the land to be able to burn timber to be able to cook for themselves and support themselves. According to a recent report just put out by the World Wildlife Fund, Palawan, this island that takes less than 10 hours to drive from north to south, has lost over 150,000 hectares of forest in the last decade. This is massive and demands immediate attention. <laughs> it's out of control, but fear not. We are not here just to talk about the problem. We are here to take action. Yes, 
as responsible travelers and stewards of the planet, we surely we can't just stand by and watch as beautiful islands like Palawan crumble under our own very external demands. That's right, it's us. We are the reason for the collapse of these ecosystems, of these communities. Uh, but there is something that we can do. Ooh this was a good decision. <laughs> oh, helmet hair, hello. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if you can hear the sounds around me. But this is the sound of nature. <laughs> this is what I came to this island looking for. This is all I need, just to be able to surround myself and this good stuff. Just check out that butt, Russ. <laughs> oh, tree joke. <laughs> this here is called a buttress. Oh, so weird, it sounds so hollow. Maybe someone can explain to me why a tree like that. I mean, I know that it's just soft timber, it's not hard timber, which is actually in regards to, to logging better that trees are soft timber like that because they're definitely not as valuable um, but yeah if someone could explain to me why it almost sounds sounds hollow that would be great ah, can you hear that isn't that a good sound ah, this little froggy's jumping he <laughs> cute Just listen to that. When they send you off to sleep. If this isn't picturesque, I don't know what is. <laughs> so good. And just look at this awesome tree. The roots coming out of it. Just love how trees can can grab onto stuff like that. But I did talk about in one of my very earliest videos something like like this here, right? You can see how the rocks are indeed cracked. Again up here. Look at this coming through there, the root of the vine. Now the reason that it can do that is because of the water that's inside of the roots, but particularly inside of the seed. At the point of germination, so basically at the point that the seed explodes, bursts to life, it has an incredible, incredible amount of pressure and power behind it. Something about equivalent to 10,000 meters deep in the water. So a thousand atmospheres of pressure. Just an immense amount of pressure that gives nature the ability just to burst through. Being able to see this life here, this gorgeous life. Look at those beautiful leaves. Being able to to just make its way through something that we would almost as humans. I mean, I don't have the ability. <laughs> I'm sure if I punch that rock right there, I'm not punching through it the same way that a tiny little seed will do at the start of its life. Just incredible. Ah. You know, this makes me so happy. <laughs> this is what I'm here for. I mean, just looking up here, one, two, three, four, five. There's a few different types of palms. There's a, this thing with its crazy roots. There is so much diversity in the species around. And that is the most important thing about creating an ecosystem. And that's why, particularly when it comes to reforestation projects, you can't just go out and plant trees. 
it needs to be done from a base level up to a canopy level, making sure that everything is working together to create a beautiful ecosystem for the plants to thrive and survive and then of course for the animals and this is just the most perfect example of it.